This year's Midas list comes at a really interesting time for venture capital, obviously with the market in turmoil and with many businesses struggling. Some people are very concerned about what the impact of the coronavirus, COVID-19, means for the startup ecosystem and for venture capital investing as a group. Startups are having to make really tough decisions right now to get through the short term. You know, even companies that still really believe in a huge long-term vision need to survive the next few months. And so we've been seeing a lot of layoffs, a lot of furloughs, companies doing hiring freezes. And you know, this is happening at really big startups, um, but also some small startups too. We've laid off 22% of our workforce, which was 200 and something people. And then we've furloughed an additional uh, 11% of our workforce. And the total people that were impacted by this was 435, either that were laid off or furloughed. And then obviously in addition to this, everyone that's in the team is also like, you know, there's just an, an element of shared burden and shared sacrifice through reduction of hours, reduction of salaries. We've seen analysts um, concerned that investment will drop a lot in the next few months. Now, we haven't seen a huge downturn necessarily yet. Um, PitchBook, a startup tracker, found that Q1 was not really that much of a drop. But as the Midas list comes out in April, we are at an interesting uh, juncture where some people believe that investing in the next few months could drop off quite a bit and startups will be in some sort of Darwinian situation where um, the good ones can be okay, but the bad ones may get cut loose. In general, we're telling people to get to 18 to 30 months of runway um, if they can. And, you know, for those that needed help to get there, um, you know, we have to sort of go through every single one and try to help them do that. Another un unexpected silver lining for companies that do have a lot of cash or are profitable is that this is the best hiring season since 2008, 2009. Um, you know, there are a lot of companies that had to cut uh, not just fat, but muscle. They had to cut deeply into their, you know, the people who they really didn't want to let go. And um, those people are out there in the job market in sort of a volume that uh, I don't think we've seen in more than 10 years. Many of the Midas List VCs actually made their investments in the last downturn. If you look at Uber, you look at Airbnb, these are companies that came sort of out of the down cycle of 08, 09. And interestingly enough, you know, when people were leaving business schools uh, 10 years ago, they didn't necessarily want to go to Wall Street or to the big banks after the financial crisis. This is going to catalyze like a lot of entrepreneurship and a lot of innovation. Like, you know, one of the things that you, you know, we've seen in the dot-com boom and bust and 9-11 and then the OA crisis is that many of our best companies were born of that, out of that environment. And I, you know, we're not gonna be able to predict what, you know, is around the corner um, with specificity, but I can pretty much guarantee you that there'll be a lot of people that are forced because they can be daring and take on ambitious projects because the opportunity cost is so low now they're gonna be forced to go try new things. In a booming economy, in frothy times, you can raise money on the basis of a story, on the basis of hope, of what you might be able to accomplish. And in harder times, you're basing it on what you've accomplished, what you've done, what you're able to do. And so from a team perspective, from a planning perspective, from a leadership perspective, all of those things are suddenly very different. And the, the founders who embrace that, the startups who understand the, the concept behind that, those are the ones that, that do well in this type of scenario. The weirdest thing about all of this is that some startups are sort of revived from the dead and doing really well that we would have thought were not that interesting a few months ago. I mean, look at Blue Apron, which went public and was basically a penny stock in January and is now one of the top performing stocks of 2020 so far. Like that was a company that had been written off and all these meal kit businesses are doing way better. Like no smart person thought in the fall of 19 that meal kit companies were still the future. And then there are businesses that are really interesting and cool businesses, but depend on live experiences. And those businesses, for example, are just getting completely hammered in the short term right now. So we're in this really weird, soupy situation where I think, you know, no one really knows the answers.